Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now, The Emperor's Spears are a Space Marine chapter that's been mentioned a few times in the lore, but they've never really had a huge amount sort of written about them. That is until Spears of the Emperor, or Emperor's Spears, I will have to look up the name of the book, <laughs> was written by Aaron Dembski Bowden, and that does wonders for your popularity. That's coming out, I believe the audiobook is already available. Uh, but to sort of celebrate that, I thought it would be cool to go ahead and have a look at how you can paint that armor. It's a nice kind of powder sky blue, which differentiates it a little bit from your standard ultramarine fare. And I like it quite a bit. I'm really pleased with how this result came out. Now, you may notice as well, as he's whizzing around here, that he's actually got a molded shoulder pad. He has the uh, correct chapter icon up on his left pauldron. And that's one that I actually 3D printed myself. Um, designed it as well. Hooray! <laughs> so if you want to get your hands on some of those, I will include the link to the SDL file over on Thingiverse in the description below. Now this is actually a really easy technique. It's pretty similar to how I paint all of my Space Marines. So without any further mucking around, let's have a look at the paints we're going to need and get started. Now I've started them off by priming them with Uniform Grey from Army Painter, but any grey tone will work pretty well for this. You could theoretically start from a white or even a blue, but I think the slight grey tone that we're going to get uh, underneath is going to work well for that kind of stormy blue that we want for this uh, Empress Spears armor. Now I'm going to start off, I've got Hoeth blue, and you might have noticed his head's missing, but don't worry. I've actually got that over here, and I've primed that separately in Korax white. There's no reason that you can't uh, assemble them completely. I'm just going to find this a great deal easier <laughs> than having to muck around with uh, painting that white later. But at any rate, let's get a little bit of Hoeth Blue out of our pot and just a wee bit of water to make sure that it will flow smoothly off the brush. Now I'm going to use the uh, large, yeah, large base brush. Uh, I really like the wedge tip on these. Eh? These are really good for the purposes that we've got. Now because this is a layer paint, you'll notice when we put it on, it's not going to cover perfectly over the gray. You see, we're going to get slight streakiness but don't worry, all you got to do is go over the whole thing once, let it dry, give it about 10 minutes or so, and then go back and give it a second coat. Now for the point of comparison, here is that first layer. And you can see there's still just a little bit of grey showing through in some areas. So I've given that about 10 minutes to dry. And let's just quickly go over with another coat over top. It is important that when you're doing two layers, or even more, that you let the one underneath dry thoroughly first, because... If you don't, when you put fresh wet paint over the top of it, you're essentially going to lift off the layer that's underneath. You're going to stop it from forming a proper foundation. So when you're doing these multiple layers, like I said, let them dry. Have a little patience if you can <laughs> and come back and do it once more. Now, once that second coat's had time to dry, we're going to go ahead and dry brush our highlights on. But instead of using a blue, we're going to use Longbeard Grey. It's because we're going to shade that later with a blue. I want to try and reinforce that kind of stormy grey sky that they've got going. So we'll quickly dry brush the edge of the base just to see what's going to come off our brush. Then start applying this, just lightly brushing along the very edges of any detail. So along this pack, shoulder pads, arm joints, all the usual. Now take your time and as always you want to make sure that you've not got very much paint on your brush at all because it's easier to add more paint than it is to try and take it off. So take your time, build up that color as you need to, and we'll go around and see what this looks like once we've applied this Longbeard Gray highlight. Now, once you've done a couple of passes, you should have something similar to this. Now, dry brushing can, ironically, be quite a tricky technique to actually master. So I do recommend have a practice, have a play especially with a color scheme like this, because you'll find it very easy if you make a mistake or put too much on. Hey, just a coat of Hoeth Blue and you can start fresh with your dry brush. Either way, what I'm going to do now, dry brushing actually introduces a little bit of texture to the miniature, which is not going to serve us too well for what comes next. I want to try and eliminate that. And I've got two options. Either I could go ahead, water down a little bit of Ard Coat, you know, a gloss varnish, and apply that all over the armor just to smooth it out, what I'm going to do instead is use a quick spray of Munitorum Varnish. It'll give me the same result, but it won't be quite as shiny. So I'm going to pop back once I've sprayed this fella. And then you're going to have a slight sheen, uh, which is not really a problem. 
this is now nice and smooth, and that's important for what we've got coming now, which is to shade the model. Now I'm not going to use straight Drakenhof Nightshade, because that would be way too dark. What I'm going to do first is get a big old dollop. One, two, it's really hard to see what you're doing with Lamy and Medium, <laughs> if I'm totally frank. But we've got two big dollops there, that will be enough. I'll rinse my brush off, and then same thing again. One, oops, two, roughly half and half medium and shade. Uh, this is not an exact science. This is really more of an art, making it up as you go. So once you're happy that you've got a little bit of thinning out in your shade there, you can go ahead and start applying it to your model. Now I want less on my brush. So I'll just rinse that off, load up again, and let's start with this backpack. So you're now just going to apply this over the whole model, well, all of the armor, and then leave it to dry, give it about 20 minutes, half an hour. Now as you are painting this on, anywhere that it pulls up a little too much in corners and stuff like that, you can just drag most of it off your brush and then sweep it away back into your brush from the miniature. Uh, this is part of the reason why the varnish is actually really helpful, because it prevents the shade from sticking to the paint so much. Now I've left him in the sun for about half an hour, and this is what we've got. And I'm actually really pleased with how that's turned out. We've got that nice deep shading, a few highlights, which have taken on a little bit of a blue tint, and we haven't really darkened down that sky blue armor very much. So, ta-da! Bonus! Now, in retrospect, it would have been really clever if I had have painted the chest eagle and the helmet in the white before doing the shading, because I'm going to shade that in the same mix anyway. So, whoopsie doodle. But let's get on to that now, and we'll fix that one. You guys can obviously figure that out when you do that one yourself. So get your medium layer brush out, and a little bit of Ulthuan Grey. Now this is going to cover the same as the blue did, and you're going to get some patchy areas. So once this is dried, same deal, come back and paint that in another coat of white over top. Now, just pretending that we had uh, shaded the chest eagle at the same time as the rest of the armor, this is what you'd have. Now, we use the same mix on the uh, helmet too, and, you know, it's a pretty nice white, but it is a little blue in some areas. So what we're going to do is just quickly dry brush that with some Praxity white. Same procedure as always, you want to make sure there's not very much on your brush, because, like, you know, you can add more. And just flicking lightly against any areas of detail, and just build up the white until you're satisfied that it looks not blue. Now with just a little bit of super glue here, we're going to go ahead and glue his head in. So I've made sure that after painting the white, I've gone ahead and hit it with a little bit of varnish just to make sure, you know, no disasters when I'm handling it. And then we'll just pop that in there. Give it a couple of seconds. Yeah, that's going to look cool when that dries. So what I'm going to do now is to skip ahead a little bit. Um, all that's left is really black equipment, some silver details, and we've done those before. So what I'm going to do, skip ahead, do those little bits, and see what he looks like with all of his, the rest of his equipment finished. And then with those details finished, our Emperor's Spear is complete. Now obviously that glosses over a few areas quite a bit, but look, I've done those before. And if you are ever stuck on how to paint a specific area or what colors to use, I thoroughly recommend go ahead and check out the Citadel Paint app. It is massively useful. It's honestly one of those that I keep returning to myself. Uh, I find it really handy, especially for things like purity seals and that. I forget my own recipes <laughs> pretty regularly, so it does the job. Now these guys are not difficult at all to do. Like I said, the only real trick is in, you know, maybe painting the helmets separately and getting the hang of how to dry brush your, your armor. Um, I thoroughly recommend do have a play around with that because the sooner you can kind of grasp uh, dry brushing as an effective tool to do things very quickly, but without necessarily having to be messy with it, you're going to be on to a winner. So any questions or anything, as always, feel free, drop a comment in the old box below. My Twitter and Facebook are both linked there too. So thank you very much for your time and you guys enjoy the rest of your day.